So what are we doing today? All right, today we've got a, a couple of things going on while we wait for the wing kits to be delivered. Okay. The wing kit, it's uh, two boxes, but uh, one set of wings. Uh, we've got some riveting to wrap up on the aft part of the tail cone. Uh, okay. Just the uh, aftmost bulkhead. We've got the primer all dried. I had a little bit of touch-up priming to do. Uh, where some of it got scraped off while we were riveting and bucking before. Yeah. And then there's a aft deck plate that gets put on. There's a couple of ribs that gets put on, and then uh, it'll be kind of crazy. We're Where gonna did... we're gonna install the top skin. Where does yaw dampener go? Yaw damper. It goes. Uh, come here. Let me show you. And does that go on before top skin or? It doesn't. It doesn't. So uh, it actually is a bracket that'll install right back here, and it, it kind of is in this area. Oh, okay. Is where uh, where that goes. These uh these these grommets uh actually our uh, snap bushings is what they're actually called the rudder cables go through the snap bushings okay the yaw dampener actually attaches to attaches to the rudder cables and actually helps pulls, stabilize it yeah pulls on the rudder to okay limit the amount of yaw that we have in flight cool okay and then then we're gonna turn it on its side and then rivet here yep we're gonna turn it on its side and we're gonna rivet these ribs in okay should be pretty pretty straightforward riveting there okay and then uh, we'll probably sit it down on the ground. We'll get an old blanket or something. And uh, I'm going to have to climb inside it. And That's my favorite part. Yes. So I'm looking forward to it. Yes. So I'll climb inside. Experience. And uh, you'll get the photo of me peeking out from, from an aft bulkhead. <laughs> and awesome. uh, it, it will be there. It doesn't, the aft bulkhead isn't on there now, but uh, we'll get that on there. Okay. And we'll get a classic photo of me from inside the tail cone riveting. Perfect. Let's, let's get to work. All right. Let's do it. Productivity. We did. But are then. You, are you recording now? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Yes. So we had some productivity, but we had one that we marked here with the little arrows um, that is going to need to be drilled out because the tungsten bucking bar was only half on the rivet, um, which that happens. It can be tricky trying to hold these bucking bars in awkward positions and you can't fully see what you're doing so see how that one rivet it's like smooth smooth I'm pointing as if you can see <laughs> like ugh. good good merp not so good that's okay so now we drill that one out and then we reset that <laughs>
How's it going? Uh, it's going pretty good. Ooh, just about spilled the, just about spilled the tray of rivets. <laughs> that would have been not so good. But, right, uh, right. Yes. So I'm, uh, I don't know, just squeezing some rivets here that are the side skins to the longer ons. And then uh, once those get done, uh, the cross plate, the actual, there's a plate that goes across uh -huh. here that really strengthens everything up torsionally on there. And uh, we're going to have to, I think actually to squeeze those too. Or most of them anyway. That's my favorite. This is my favorite tool <laughs> and my favorite thing that happens with the airplane though because it means less riveting for myself. That's right. And their quality. So invest in the yoke. Is that what they're called? The yep. yokes? This is, the... A, this is a longer on yoke. It looks like a, well, it looks, I guess it looks like a C, but it allows you to get around the, the flange of that. Uh huh. Of that angle, um, and they I set have a purdy rivets. They do, they do. They're very, very consistent, and uh, you can dial it in. This has got an uh, adjustable set on it here that you can raise and lower that to dial it in exactly to the right height that you want. And but it's technically an optional tool, right? It is. It is. It's a, but it would be in the favorite category. Yes. Yeah. You, uh, it's worth it. You definitely need some sort of squeezer. Um, there's the, this is a pneumatic. They make uh, some pneumatic hydraulic that's even smaller, uh, a little bit more expensive for the pneumatic hydraulic, but then they make a, a hand squeezer too that, well, I mean, it's powered by you and- uh, Gives you good forearms. Well, yeah, you'd certainly look like Popeye when you're, when you're done. Well, some people like it. Yeah. So we're basically waiting for the delivery. Should be here soon. They truck they driver called. called and left the voicemail. Didn't they didn't say to call back and they didn't he didn't leave his cell phone number. He just left the main terminal said, number. I'm so. gonna leave a giant box in your driveway. That's right. Two giant boxes. Does it feel like Christmas? It definitely feels like Christmas. Okay, good. Yes. The Grand Fuba? Oh, yeah. And does that go the entire distance of both wings, or is that just for one That's wing? Just for one wing. Wow. Yahtzee.
so now it's the evening and it is time to start inventory. It's been a long day so far. It has. So <laughs> get that package open, right? Oh, yeah. Start yeah. Here. So uh you know, you get a lot of first of all, you get a lot of paper from vans. You can see we've got two giant yard waste bags and that's well, that's not yard waste. That's actually the paper that vans uses in the to pack this stuff. I'd rather have it packaged well. Oh uh, yeah, they, I mean they do a fantastic job. They. Uh, I thought they, I heard that they banned packing peanuts and and stuff too. I so believe that. Yeah, I believe that. At least it's more environmental, I guess. Yes. All right, so we'll go ahead and open up the packing list. I've got, I have a separate separate package of the blueprints for this particular kit that's in the house, but. Start out here, you've got, uh, well, let's see what we have. We've got an inventory packet. Okay. And uh, the way we do this, I mean, they give you instructions on the things that you should look for. It talks about the longer ons, how they're, you know, very specific for this, uh, this kid. You don't wanna, you don't wanna cut anything. They give you some angle for, uh, for, uh, for the longer ons. You gotta be careful. You. Uh, you cut that that's going to be pretty expensive shipping to replace out um fiberglass components well we uh we didn't get fiberglass components here mm. because we told bands we didn't want it because we're getting zip tips okay that's right so uh you know we don't really need to do that so you get a lengthy list here Yada, yada, yada. Somewhere. This is not it. This is all just the instructions. <laughs> so read that. So read that. Read but it. Yeah. We're not right now. Right. Um, this looks like some, some blueprints, some instructions for the fuel tank senders. We bought some. Oh, yeah. That's important. Mechanical senders. We used uh, capacitance style senders on our RV7. But with all the movement and different fuel types and everything, um, you know, I just figured we would just go with the mechanical ones and just takes one less thing the ongoing calibration or the future potential of mix and fuel types are having different specific gravity that influences the reading. Well, this, you know, it's just a float always works no matter what. It's broken down by various bags. The way that Christine and I usually inventory these, we do all the parts first and then we come back later and do all the hardware because there's a lot of hardware. You can see all these bags that have nut plates and rivets and you know little and we literally check every single thing i would say that there's sometimes like where it's like a, a giant bag of something and we just trust it's a bag of something yeah in. yeah like uh, here's a great example like i'm not gonna count the, the, yeah, <laughs> right this says there's 270 mk 319 bs i mean that's a start, certain style of a pulled rivet or blind rivet and it just like christine said 270 we're, we trust you we trust you in there so, so we get that crazy exactly but when you say check we have a bag of that yes so and then we count out some things like eight of something four of something exactly we typically do keep inventory of the bolts and that yep. sort of stuff to make sure that all the the an hardware is there and then uh you know here you get to the actual main the main stuff so these are the actual part numbers vans is really really good with how they even have part number layout uh everything that starts with uh, uh an f would be for fuselage so on the tail cone that we just are working on wrapping up all the parts there were f because it's technically part of the fuselage on the wing everything is part you know it starts with a w for wing on the elevators an e and so on right so they do a really really good job on uh, make it easy to try to keep tabs of everything but i mean as you can see here we That's got a lot of a lot of items yeah. to get through in these little packets i mean yeah and it's chunks but then it's a lot in there the, go ahead no i was just gonna say that we typically don't get this done in a day we just chip away at it and because it it's arduous it takes a while it's a lot it is that's fine so let's get to it let's get to it <laughs> 